looking for an amazing fall project but don't even know where to start looking, I have three steps to help you pick the perfect fall project. Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarny podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. Welcome. I am so glad you are here. Today, I'm going to be wearing my newly released pattern, one of my newly released patterns. You guys, I have not released a pattern since the end of May. I am rusty with pattern releases. <laughs> But I am so excited to have this gorgeous fall set out. It is one of my tiered pattern systems. So it has a cozy, a cowl, and a hat. The cowl has two sizes in it. The hat has four variations. You're just gonna be so cozy this fall. So I love that this one has the point in the middle. It's like putting on a bandana without like having to figure out how to tie it and keep it in place. I also love that that little point just covers. I have a lot of v-neck shirts, but you know, it gets chilly and it, when it's chilly out, you don't want your uh, chest and neck exposed. So it covers that V really nicely. And today it's not super chilly out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this down a little bit so it's not so high up on my neck and maybe, maybe fold it all the way around. Ooh, yes. I like that because that's going to keep it away from my neck without being, um, too, too cozy because we're like just we're just getting a hint of a fall that it's coming so this gorgeous yarn is Malabrigo yarn if you'd like to shop that there's a link in the show notes below link to the introduction video as well if you want to learn all about the whole shebang and uh, get a bunch of ways to style a hat which you know I don't think we think much about styling a hat but I got a few fun ways you can wear a hat. So go check that out. All right, let's answer our question. I've been looking through all the patterns and I feel like everything and nothing is catching my eye. I'm at a loss. How can I pick a project that I'm really going to enjoy? You guys, I get that. As the seasons shift, I find so often I'm really tempted to dive into a whole bunch of new projects. But then I find that like I'm super excited about like too many, or, but also just like not completely enthused about anything, which I feel like ends in like just a stalemate with myself over like, what am I going to make? <laughs> So here's what I've got for you. I've got three steps to help focus your search so that you can pick exactly the right pattern. Step number one is to set your intention. Now I know that that seems kind of new agey, but I'm not talking about like a vague intention. I'm talking let's get specific. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish with this project? Is there a hole in your wardrobe that you want to fill? Do you want a new sweater? When I talked several episodes ago about how I wanted a cardigan that could just sit on the back of my chair in my office that this winter it would just be the thing I threw on whenever I was chilly. That's the intention of a project that I'm making is to fill that gap, that need that I want that isn't just like, ah, oh, crochet project. It's specific. I have a hole in my wardrobe. I want to fill it and I'm going to fill it with something handmade. Could be though, it doesn't have to be like, we think wardrobe, we think like sweaters and tops and stuff. It doesn't have to be that large of a project. You could look at your winter hat from last year and either be like, oh, it's looking a little rough or I just want a new one. <laughs> Those are great intentions. Also, I know I've been needling you about this, but as we roll into the holiday season, guys, it's getting closer and closer. Your intention simply could be that you're going to focus on things for gift giving. And it does not have to be holiday gift giving. It could be gifts for weddings, new babies, uh, special birthdays. Any of those things could be gifts that you want to work on. Another intention could be that you want to learn something new. Say you've always been wondering if if you would enjoy Tunisian crochet or you've always wanted to learn a puff stitch. That is an intention that's going to focus your search down to a project that meets that need. Another great intention that you can set is using up your stash friends. 
that is something I need to do. I have big intentions, just wait for it, of cleaning out my yarn wall again. I have a giant bookcase in my office that's full of yarn and it needs to be gone through and organized so that I can see what I have better and use up what I have. If your intention is to use up some of your yarn, that's a great way to focus your search. You're gonna start with the yarn instead of starting with the project. Step number two is to seek joy. Friends, our projects should always bring us some level of joy. Does there come a point in some projects where we are maybe not the most joyful? Yes, absolutely. I am never joyful about weaving in ends. <laughs> but I have this great stripey project that I was working on. Hated weaving in the ends, but the final project with all the stripes Oh, it gives me so much joy. It's exactly what I wanted. So I want you to take a moment in this process to think about what about your craft brings you joy? Is there a specific type of project that every time you go back to it, you're like, oh my gosh, brings me so much joy. Let's say every time you crochet a hat, you're like, that was just so satisfying. But maybe you're like, I don't need any more hats. That doesn't mean you can't work on hats. There are lots of places that take donations of hats. So you could use up some yarn in your stash, make a project that brings you a lot of joy, and be altruistic and gift your crochet projects. Is there a specific color of yarn or type of yarn that brings you joy? I know that a yarn that is highly variegated always brings me joy to work with because I love seeing the little pops of color that come through as I work with a yarn. If color brings you joy like it brings me joy and boy does it really bring emotions out for me, then stick with a color that you really love. What brings you joy could also be a specific yarn, whether it's trying a new yarn or you always go back to cotton yarn or you'd love to try some Surrey alpaca because you want something really soft. Having that tactile experience of a yarn we love in our hands is an important piece of the joy that our project brings us. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is that not every type of project brings everyone joy. I know of crocheters who only crochet blankets. They love, love blankets. And can I say, I don't even know why, because never has a blanket brought me joy. <laughs> but just because a blanket doesn't bring me joy doesn't mean that a blanket doesn't bring someone else joy. If blankets bring you joy, by all means, crochet all the blankets. If cup cozies bring you joy, make a million cup cozies. Leave them at a coffee shop with a little tag that says free for you. You will make people's day. But then the most important part of this is going back to you and what brings you joy in your craft. Once you have set your intention and thought about what brings you joy, the third step is that you're going to search carefully. We're diving into finding an actual project that is both going to serve our intention and bring us joy. So the very first part of searching carefully is keeping your joy and your intention front of mind. Whether that's a sticky note that you put on your computer as you're searching or just something you remind yourself a couple times each time you sit down to search for your project because you might not find the perfect thing the very first time you search. But it's really easy to get caught up in all the pretty and forget those things. So find a way to really keep those in the front of your brain as you're searching for the perfect project. If your intention was to use from your stash, Ravelry has a great feature where you can search specific yarns and see what people have made out of them. And you can narrow searches of projects down to a specific yarn weight. So let's say your intention was to use from your stash and something that really brings you joy is crocheting cardigans for yourself. You can go to Ravelry, you can type in crochet cardigan. Then you can narrow your search to 
double, do, mm -hmm, double click the crochet there because sometimes you'll find knit ones thrown in if you don't specify just crochet projects. And then you can scroll down and specify what yarn weight you want. So let's say you've got a cardigan's worth of worsted weight yarn in your stash. Go ahead and put worsted weight and then it will narrow down cardigans in worsted weight yarn so that you can use from your stash. So you can use from your stash and make a project that brings you joy. I also want you to look at the patterns really critically. It can be very easy to get excited about a project and just dive right in without really looking at the pattern critically and then find yourself with something that you don't really enjoy. A cardigan is great and it might look super cute, but if you prefer working top down and you on a whim buy a cardigan pattern without noticing that it's worked bottom up, you may lose enthusiasm for that. Go ahead and on Ravelry, take a look at the projects that are associated with that pattern. Sometimes there are a lot, sometimes there are a few, but this can be a great way to search for different color combinations, different yarns that have been used for garments, what they look like on different body shapes and sizes projects can really help you see exactly what a pattern is so that you can make the best choice possible. On Etsy, you tend not to see as many pictures associated with pattern reviews like you do on Ravelry with the projects, but looking at reviews on Etsy can give you some idea of how the pattern has gone for other people who have used it in the past. I have a whole entire video on tips and tricks to help you find better patterns. And so I'm going to link that down in the show notes so that if you want to dive into this strategy of carefully searching a little more, you can go watch that video too. All right, let's talk small businesses. I have an Earth Love by Danny mug here. You guys, do you know now that I'm obsessed with bees and coffee? Um, my oldest got stung a couple summers ago, so every time you see a bee, he's like in a complete tizzy. And I'm like, hey, they don't want to hurt you. Just calm down. Bees are our friends. <laughs> I love everything about this mug, from the glaze on top with that gorgeous color to the bees stamped on it to that amazing carving that looks like a honeycomb. It's just really lovely. I'm wearing another pair of earrings by my friend Adrienne. She is from Mandrel Works. These are really gorgeous. This was the first pair I ever bought from her. I was talking to Sam, who also owns my local yarn shop. Sarah and Sam are the married couple who own the shop. <clears throat> I was talking to Sam and I was telling her, if I had to like really narrow down my earring collection, which heaven forbid, I would be so sad. But if I did, I would keep every pair of Adrian's earrings that I own. I wear them so much and they are really high quality. Some quick announcements. The Mystery Crochet Along starts October 1st, but pre-sale of the Sybil Shawl, which is our Mystery Crochet Along pattern, starts tomorrow. If you're seeing this on Wednesday and you're not signed up for my email list, get signed up there so that you'll be reminded and so that you can get the best discount code on our Mystery Cal pattern. It is going to be so much fun. I really know you're just going to love the pattern. It's fantastic. <laughs> If you don't already have your yarn gathered for the Mystery Cal, kits are still available. I don't know how quickly Tanya will be able to get those kits out, but if you'd like to use your stash or make your own kit, I will also link to the video that has all the tips and tricks on creating your color palette or your own yarn kit for a project that we talked about mm, a couple weeks ago. Just a quick little show and tell. You guys, Appleton has a really great farmer's market and I love going down there and meandering. I went with my family a, a few weeks ago and I got this yarn from a local farmer who raises the sheep, shears the sheep, gets the yarn milled, dyes it. This is a natural color though. It's just, it's just so beautiful and squishy. It makes me so happy to know that I support a local farmer to me. Uh, the farm is called Heritage Valley Farm and Wool Mill. They are 
close-ish to me, close enough that they come to the farmer's market every weekend. Uh, and this is a Coriadale CVM mix. It's a DK weight, 300 yards per 100 grams. Oh my gosh, it's just so squishy. And I can't wait to make something special with it. Do you have a farmer's market? Do you go to your farmer's market? Does anyone at your farmer's market sell yarny goodness? I would love to know. Tell me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I would love it if you would like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Don't forget to sign up for my email list. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I hope you have an amazing week of crafting. We'll see you right back here next week. Happy crafting!